Hello everyone, Caddy Wampus Gamer here bringing you another episode of Minecraft Awakening. Today's episode we are going to be making some items from Nuclear Craft. Alright, in order to make these items you are going to need a dire crafting table. I made the dire crafting table back in episode 24. You can check out that episode if you want to. Alright, so the first thing that we need is one of the machine bases and that is made in the dire crafting table. Some of the things you're going to need for it you're going to need to make silicone armor plating that's made with four iron, five silicone just like this you craft these. Alright then what you're going to do is in the alloy smelter and I gotta make room in here you're going to throw in the silicone plates or the silicone armor plating with conductive iron. Conductive iron is iron and redstone in the alloy smelter and it takes 10 of these and one of these in order to make the conductive iron armor plating. Alright, then you're going to take these you're going to put them into the alloy furnace and you're going to put them in with electrical steel. Electrical steel is iron, coal dust, and silicone. Okay, you're going to throw those in, you're going to smelt those up. You're also going to need bronze gears. I try to make a bunch of this stuff ahead of time because some of it is multiple steps. All right, let's get these. Those are smelted. Grab these. Grab this. All right. So if we search nuclear, The item that we want is the isotope separator, which we need the machine base. And this is how you make it. Let me get this out of the way. These, I just showed you how to make these gold contacts. You put a gold nugget. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to put a, where is it, gold nugget in and it's going to give you into the forging hammer. It's going to give you a gold coin. Then you're going to put that gold coin back in and it is going to give you one of those where is it? There it is. One of these gold contacts. All right, and this is the forging hammer here if you don't remember me making that. I don't remember what episode I made that in. All right, so we got those, let's see. Oops, we gotta turn NEI back on, oops. And I just learned something new. I didn't realize you could click here to see the crafting status of stuff. That's pretty cool. All right, at nuclear. There was one more thing I needed I have the lead plates, I have this block, I have this amplifier electron tubes. All right. For that, you need electrum wire cool coils, which are these right here, which is electrum around a stick. Grab a bunch of this. Use these. Grab those two coils, use those in it was this one, right? Better be Okay, it is. Okay, so in the crafting table... Oh, that's right. The other thing we need are these plates. Okay. These plates you can either make with coal dust and lead, and you get two, or you can make tough alloy ingots, which give you 12, or tough alloy plate or ingots and dust. Okay, the recipe for this. You can make this the dust and smelt it into the ingots, or you can make the ingots. So it takes two coal dust, two lead dust, two silver dust, two iron dust, and a universal reactant in order to get four tough alloy dust. You cannot make the ingots and then crush them into dust at this time. There's no recipe for that. Um, I need to mention it to Shadow Wake or he might see it in this video and add that. All right, the universal reactant is sugar, crushed lapis, and redstone. All right, so let's make some more of this oh yeah and the ingots you can make those with the full ingots but like I said you can't grind it down to the powder so that's like the downside of that okay 
Now, if I remember correctly, it's something like this. Uh, let's see this recipe. Yep, lead plates. I didn't grab the lead plates. I can't even say lead plates. And we're going to need these lead plates later on. All right, let's see. Lead plates like this. Gears like this. The electron tube like that. These like this. This like this. And this here. Aha, I got it. Okay, machine base. We now have a machine base. Let's use this. There's all sorts of stuff. Fission controller, isotope separator, which is what we want. So we'll just go ahead and grab that. All right, now I believe I just put this down, give it power. And now I should be able to take uranium and put it in here. Okay, good. This doesn't take as long as I thought it would. It takes 250,000 RF to do, though. And you might be wondering, why are we doing this? We're not actually building a reactor today. We're going to be building something called an RTG. I forget what it stands for, but it's basically a single block that you put down that generates a certain amount of RF per tick but it generates that forever. It never runs out. All right. So now that we've got six uranium, uranium-238, we can take it like this, five in a cross pattern, lead plates like this, and we get something called a weak RTG. Now, if we hold shift, it says generates a constant stream of five RF per tick, which, yeah, that's pretty weak. Why would you even want something that generates 5 RF per tick? There's several reasons. Like when you first start out, if you make a survivalist generator, let's see. If you remember back when you first started, you might have needed just a little bit of power to run something and you make a survivalist generator. I believe the output on that is 5 RF per tick. But it uses coal. This, once you make this, it takes nothing to get power from it. All right, so now we got a few more of these. All right, let's do this like this. Plus, one of the nice things is conduit, let's see, energy conduit. So basically, you can put these down. We'll put a capacitor bank down like this. Now these there was some confusion. I was trying to explain it on Discord last night, and I was really tired, and I couldn't think of how to explain it. I'm like, I'll just do tomorrow's episode on it. These are not a multi-block structure. These are not a fuel source. They can't be used for anything. The only thing they do is you place them down, and you can see this will start out putting 5 RF per tick, and if you look on the right-hand side, you can see plus 5 RF per tick. These do not have to be touching each other to work. I can space them out like this, and now I should have 15 RF per tick. They can go next to each other, no big deal. There's no benefit of placing them. You get no benefit by placing them next to each other. It's still 15 RF per tick. So you can see if you make a compact machine and you were to stick a whole bunch of these inside of it, you could have a decent power source. Like by themselves, it's not a whole bunch. Let's see, this is 238. So what is... Hmm, now this is curious. See, there's so much to learn about this mod. All right, uranium-235. What can I use that for? I can turn it into lead. Okay, so basically I would make fuel a fuel pellet like this, put it in an empty cell that would give me this. This I can put in... Ooh... Hmm, I could put that in and get more uranium out, more uranium-238 for making the weak RTGs, RTGs. Or I could use it in the fish or a fission reactor. And I'm not sure what all of this stuff is, but basically you get power out of it. It takes power to keep it running, but you also get power. Plus it turns it into a depleted one, which when you use that, you can get... Uranium-238, 236, 237, and 230, or plutonium-239. 
So if I understand it right, it's really hard to find any kind of documentation on this mod. I did find a couple of YouTube videos. I'll try and link them in the description. The guy did a pretty good job explaining stuff, but he didn't explain some of the stuff that I still wanted to know. I think basically you would make a bunch of the first fuel cells, put them in the reactor, then you would take these to make better fuel cells and then use the remains and scraps from them to build better ones and better ones and better ones. Because if we look, RTG, and we wait for NEI to catch up. All right, so this is the one we made, 5 RF per tick. Now the next one up is Americium. Not sure how it's pronounced. This generates 40 RF per tick. The next one up is Plutonium RTG. It generates 100 RF per tick. And the Californium generates 500 RF per tick. Now you can imagine, you know, if you have 10 of these, you know, you're at 5,000 RF per tick. That's not too shabby. I mean, this generator that I have here on the wall, this burns through coal like you would not believe. Like that's how fast you just saw it went through a whole block of coal. It only burns for less than a second. This only generates 3,200 RF per tick. All right, so you're talking seven of those high-end RTGs output more than that generator, and it's not burning a block of coal every second. So yeah, this is definitely useful. Some of the things from the mod, let's see, let's make a few more of these. Throw that in there, throw this in here. There we go, see, I just made 10 more. And I have a bunch of uranium, so I can just take these like this, put these down like this. And like I said, they don't have to be grouped together, but you do have to have a way to get the power out of them and get it into something like a capacitor bank or whatever. Okay, see, I'm generating 65 RF per tick right now. So you can see, that's, that's how much power I'm generating. So this, in theory, let's see, tool. I grab my network tool and I click on here. Right now, my energy usage for my ME system fluctuates a little bit, but I'm using under 300 RF per tick. So in theory, I could just make a bunch of these, put them in a hole underneath of it, and just run the wire up and power my ME system. One of the things I will do is like, I'll use one of these over here. I said that I wanted to make a system I can't automatically input items but what I want to do is output everything into um, crafters turn the things back into bees queen bees and back up in here well I need power to run the crafters considering that they'll only run like every few minutes 5 RF per tick will just charge up the table while it's not being used and then you know it'll use some of the power and then the RTG will fill back in. So it's an, a nice way to power little things that don't get used often or you just stick a whole bunch of them together and generate enough power to just save up when you do need to use something bigger. Like this, I'll probably take a basic capacitor bank, throw it on my metal press over there and then add a couple of RTGs, maybe just one. Then it'll have 5 million RF to use whenever I want to make gears and there's no fuel cost whatsoever I never have to remember to bring a stack of coal over with me or anything like that so these things are very handy and nuclear craft oh my goodness later on like when you get into the high end stuff you can make something that's really cool it's the pistol this thing is like really cool uses DU bullets as ammunition, deals a large amount of damage. This thing is expensive to make. The bullets actually aren't that bad. It's just tough alloy ingot, which I've already made those, gunpowder, which I have, and uranium-238, which should be, yep, right here. So the ammo for this thing is actually pretty easy to make. I would love to have this thing when I go to tackle the Ender Dragon, but unfortunately... Let's see, the advanced ender plating needs boron 10, which I think needs the 
fusion reactor, if I remember correctly. So yeah, this is its like end game. You can also make like nukes. You can make a nuclear grenade. Okay, so a nu a nuclear or a yeah a nuke is plutonium two forty one reinforced plating, which is just basically the basic plating plus more alloy ingots. Ignore the assembler recipe. As far as I know, that's not in the game. That also could be taken out of any eye. All right, so yeah, I can just keep filling this up with all the uranium that I have. Because, like, I have plenty of it. I have 72 here, and I have 37 here. Not to mention, like, I can double to get two to six times the amount out of that. Throw it all in there, break it down. You know, I can make a whole bunch of these and have a fairly good power source. All right, so I think that does it for this episode. Until next time, Caddy Wampus Gamer, signing off.